Uh, Tara, I, I want to talk about, um, OK, we've got gridlock here in Washington, D.C. when it comes to the legislative process, but U.S. presidents are quite powerful when they can I issue these so-called executive orders. We saw it over the first travel ban from seven mainly Muslim countries, which became six in the second one. Uh, we've seen it just in the last few hours with pulling back on climate change commitments, something that glued the United States and China together, for example, uh, in the globe. Is this how a U.S. president can try and uh, create uh, action and alarm and momentum in 100 days if Congress won't always go along with him? You know, the issue of climate change is an important topic these days, and a lot of countries that you haven't seen behind this uh, has been coming on board and are uh, becoming uh, wary of the matter and um, being vocal about it. So uh, President Trump coming out today and uh, essentially uh, dismissing much of uh, President Obama's work on mm. the issue is quite alarming, especially uh, considering that we uh, that he did not at all uh, raise the, the 2015 Paris Treaty, uh, an important element of this uh, discussion on a, on a global stage, and. Um, and uh, we haven't heard from that. So, um, of course, uh, this happened today, and uh, we will definitely see a lot of reaction uh, mm -hmm. from both sides. But it's certainly something to look uh, uh, to in, in the long run. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Paris Agreement, it was called an agreement because if it was called Paris, a treaty, that, yes. yeah, uh, the, the Senate would have had to agreement. sign it. And yes. I remember all the tortuous negotiations that they, they had to uh, come up with that wording. Right. But it is a good example, isn't it, where a, 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 a one president can come in, uh, uh, Lester, and, and remove a lot of work that the previous president did. Um, what, what more can we expect from Donald Trump, do you think, in the first 100 days? He told us in the campaign a lot of what he was going to do, and he seems to be doing it. Yeah, he's about jobs, and he's about American jobs. He's about putting Americans back to work. He's going to browbeat American companies to bring their factories back to the United States. He's going to go reach out to foreign companies to have their to invest directly in the United States market. He's going to uh, talk about reducing regulations and climate protections. Uh, so as to increase job growth. He's absolutely going to build on that. This, uh, his exercise today was all about jobs and making America great again. Um, and, and to uh, Tara's point, the reason he's able, let's be a little bit clear here, looking back, the reason he's able to kind of wipe out a lot of what President Obama did with a stroke of a pen is because President Obama enacted it with a stroke of a pen. He because he couldn't get it through orders, Congress either. Yeah. Couldn't get it through Congress. Right. So, so Trump is now reversing the stuff that's reversible. It's the stuff like Obamacare that went through Congress and was endorsed by the legislative branch that's a lot harder to undo. So the, the, to the extent President Obama had achievements that were endorsed by another branch, they're going to be tougher to undo. If it was just him, Trump's going to go after all of those. Atiba, uh, other, um, I, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no. I just was saying I agree that jobs uh, at the bottom line is why he was elected. <clears throat> but there is even a question if even with his actions today, if they will result in more jobs. So that people was going to be, be my question. For yeah. that. Uh, it's the market forces uh, that have been, say, hurting the coal industry for decades. Uh, will this happen just because he said, well, I'm going to bring back coal? You still have natural gas. It's cheaper and it's going to be competitive. And what is going to happen? Will these coal jobs come back? Will these manufacturing jobs come back when so many were lost not to foreign companies but to automation? So there are so many other factors that will come into it. And just because Donald Trump says this will bring jobs back, well, there's a lot more to it than that. And the voters who voted for him for the reason for jobs, they will be looking for results for sure. One area, Atiba, where he could uh, get some movement across the aisle, um, as Mary and others have mentioned, is infrastructure. That's something they want to do in their, first, maybe not first 100 days, but I understand the May big budget and infrastructure plan may be uh, rolled out around then. Is that something where Democrats, um, disaffected communities, for example, that, that need urban jobs, could be put into some sort of bipartisan a uh, Trump agenda that actually could get some traction, it's going to cost a lot of money as well. Nobody wants to be blamed for being a job killer. So that's <laughs> first off. Right. So, of course, mm -hmm. both sides will, will come I to the table and figure economy, out yeah. how, to, how to do that. The, other, the question, though, also becomes wages. I mean, we've been having a discussion now for the last few years about should the minimum wage be increased. Um, in terms of what we're looking at, what we've seen, what the president just did today, 
there's a reason why in the Obamacare bill that there was provisions to help workers who were affected by coal, by working in these coal mines. What I believe that happened today was actually a reversal and is going to be impactful and hurtful to the health of, of a lot of Americans. And when we start talking about infrastructure, when we start talking about is that going to include building roads, widening our highways, advancing and improving our airport systems, that's still going to go back to automation. It's still going to go back to workers having to be trained. And I think that the former president was trying to get us on that road, and it would be hard for us to get those jobs back for a lot of disaffected workers if we don't continue down that road of training them to be able to work in this 21st century. Tara, what do you think about infrastructure? You know, a lot of countries need it. I was recently in China and saw uh, uh, them moving ahead very fast. It's almost a global competition when it comes to infrastructure these days. Absolutely, and I agree with um, other guests. You know, these jobs in my, uh, mining and uh, coal industry are jobs that simply don't exist today. Some of them uh, don't even uh, exist and are not feasible in the industries that, that they're involved in. And I think uh, instead of trying to bring back jobs that no longer are needed in, the, in this um, day and age, um, the, the idea can be to um, rethink jobs that can work with um, the um, new infrastructures that can be in place, rather than bringing businesses that, that have been um, outsourced or no longer needed. And um, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, you know, the president ran on these promises, and a lot of voters mm. um, who um, looked up to him are going to look for answers and um, uh, as we have seen in the last couple of uh, weeks a lot of these voters have come out and said you know um, let's give the president um, some time and let's give him a chance with this what a lot of them are saying uh, with respect to um, this uh, health care uh, reform that, you know, or um, lack thereof, I should say. Um, so um, a lot of them are looking up to the president still and uh, would, one way or another, want him to reintroduce these jobs. Yeah, let's say, behind the headline, I think Tara's got a point here, behind the headline of the 37% approval rating, if you look at Trump's base, the people who really started voting for him <laughs> from day one, yeah. um, it's pretty solid. In fact, yep. they like yep. uh, the atmosphere yep. that you described. Yep. Um, mm. Does that create its own sort of uh, defense, if you like, the, 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 his own support going forward? Or is that enough? Does he need to expand this? I think it's a great question. And I think we're, we're all going to learn over the next four years whether this, this act is going to work or not. He's. Um, Say what you want about the mine workers. I was on Capitol Hill today uh, visiting some offices. Every elevator I got in had guys wearing United Mine Workers uh, of America T-shirts. Union voters they were, who would have they not there, voted for Republicans. They were yeah. there to lobby. They yeah. were there to support Trump. Um, you know, they're real. They vote. Uh, at, at a certain point, what this is really about is the Republican Party is changing. And to the extent, if you're a Democrat, what you should be worried about is the Republican Party stealing private sector union votes away from your party. Because that's exactly what's happening. It's happening across well, the board. Well, that's why he won with Michigan and, and exactly. Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. About you Michigan, could Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. It's going to be about that for the next three and a half years. Pay attention, folks. He's, he's actually executing very well on that, on that front. And those folks love what he's doing. And I but also and, he and has further, to reach out. To let me, sorry, just, sorry, let me just make one quick point. Which sure, and then we'll bring Mary in. I think his overall approval rating is low by historical standards. But for him, it's not actually that low. He never got high approval ratings during the campaign. We have to look at it in a different way right now. He's OK with having a 30% approval, 37% approval rating. And that goes he to knows, Atiba's point of so many people exactly. not voting, energizing your base so they turn when out. When he gets to election day, that's the only poll he's worried about. Mary, you were going to say? Well, I was just going to say that uh, he, as another guest pointed out, he did lose the popular vote, so you would think he would be expanding on this base. Uh, also, that he has energized the opposition, so you might have more people who didn't vote the last time coming out and voting. Uh, and when people talk about the working class, actually, they should say white working class, because so much Very of the working point. class and even rural folks in this country are black and brown. Mm -hmm. And they did not come out for Trump. Some of them didn't come out at all. Mm. And he hasn't really, he met with the Congressional Black Caucus, but he has a lot of work to do, particularly in these communities. And if Jeff Sessions, his attorney general, turns back some of the oversight on policing, uh, voting rights and such, 
he is not going to make inroads in this particular community, and they may be energized to come out and vote against him. So I say that, yes, he has his solid support, but he doesn't seem to be building on it in key areas, and he needs to watch for that. Okay, I'm going to ask Atiba and Tara the same question. If you were Donald Trump right now, you see your approval uh, ratings going down. Within the first 100 days, you can also make changes. Uh, lots of presidents have done it. They, they get in. Clinton had a big problem when he came in uh, um, with the don't ask, don't tell policy. Other people have, uh, have had problems in their first 100 days as they get uh, used to governing. Okay, Michael Flynn, the national security advisor, fired um, very quickly. Would he replace some of the people that, that aren't working for him? Who are they, do you think? Yeah, I mean, first off, if I was president or in his shoes, hopefully my approval rating would be flipped. It would be 73% not 37%. <laughs> well, I'd vote for you. There we go. But, you know, in terms of what he has assembled, there were a lot of my friends who said when he was running for office for president and that we saw the Make America Great Again, that it meant Make America White Again. And that is so the there is a lash. great there is a great yeah. deal of distrust. When you see the cabinet and what it's made up of, it's white men. One woman and one black man. White men and too, a yeah. lot of rich. Yeah. So yeah. you there's there's a real big level, a high level of distrust within mm. different communities. I heard the the, um, the president talk about he kind of uh, tried to compare himself to Reagan. And I thought about this today. Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. We <laughs> have a president who is building a wall and keeps talking about building a wall that's going to separate us from another country who we should be doing trade with, who we should be trying to figure out how do we improve, help to improve their economy so that their wages go up, so that we benefit. This put America first proposal that the president has talked about. When the president says something, it becomes policy. Putting America first should also be what has made America great in the past has been our ability to work with other countries to help to elevate others. I don't see that, and I see distrust because what we feel right now is a high level of racism and xenophobia and sexism. And to my last point, when we keep talking about jobs, if we're going to talk about jobs, we cannot ignore the fact that women still make 70 cents on the dollar in this country. Yeah, uh, great points, Atiba, and thanks for bringing up the wall because the 21 billion that they want to get looks like it's probably going to be blocked in Congress again. Tara, if you were Donald Trump, who would you throw overboard and how would you write the ship if it needs writing? Sure. I think um, two key words I would uh, say uh, to this question. Uh, talk to your team and leadership. Uh, you know, there's, um, there's this sort of thought that, you know, when you're the toughest and sort of most powerful kid in the playground, you don't go around bullying other kids. Rather, you take leadership and you, you know, become the person in charge and take charge of your team. And I think uh, Donald Trump has, incredible, uh, has an incredible opportunity to, to be the um, commander-in-chief and leader that he wants to be because he has um, some good folks in his um in his administration. And uh, the second point uh, was conversation. I mean, mm. one of the biggest uh, sort of hurdles uh, after his first executive order uh, being that travel ban was that he didn't talk to his team. I think right. when you, you know, wake up uh, okay. in the morning and decide that you want to, uh, you know, pass something and, and uh, uh, not, uh, but, but not talk to your team, uh, that, that would be, uh, you know, one of the biggest uh, challenges. Thank, and, thank and when you, Tara. Sorry, country, we're running out of time. I want to just give a quick, uh, quick that, last so. word uh, to Lester. What would you do to write the ship, or does it need writing? Where would you change if he was going to make this a, a hundred days for, more successful? I think you should stop thinking in terms of a hundred days and start thinking in terms of four years. And maybe, maybe initially he worries about the next 12 months, and he should not be trying to jam legislation through Congress. He should be working very deliberately and slowly. Frankly, that health care plan that they had was not that bad. If he would have taken more time to sell it to the American people and point out the positive aspects, I think it would have been much more successful. Uh, and I think, and I hope, with his tax plan and his infrastructure plan and these other things, that he'll take the time to do it right, explain what he's looking for to the American people, have them put some pressure on legislators to go into the right place and do this thing the right way instead of, you know, acting like everything has to be done in the next five minutes. Great. Do we all agree he should stop tweeting? Absolutely. Yes.